Hi, welcome to our science class. Are you ready to learn something new today? In this video, we will be talking about yet another topic related to our atmosphere. It is the greenhouse effect and global warming. I am Ms. Jessica Luis de la Terra, your Science 7 teacher. From our previous video, we learned that the atmosphere is a blanket of air that serves as our protection from other heavenly bodies and the harmful rays of the sun. We also learned that the atmosphere of the earth is capable of sustaining life. It is composed of different gases which are vital to all living things. The atmosphere is comprised of different layers which has distinct characteristics and functions to serve. Okay, so we're all set for this session's discussion. But, let us take a look first at some questions to ponder as we go through the discussion. 1. How is a greenhouse compared to our atmosphere? 2. Why is greenhouse effect important to Earth? And 3. Why should we be alarmed about the impacts of global warming? Before we start with our topic, let's take a look at this animated picture. What can you observe inside a building? As you can see, the plants inside the structure receive sunlight, but the heat inside gets more concentrated than the outside. In gardening, this is called a greenhouse. The greenhouse is a warm place for plants and animals to grow. The sun shines into the greenhouse and warms it up. Then, a lot of the heat energy becomes trapped inside the greenhouse and it stays warm. How is the greenhouse related to our atmosphere? Well, the atmosphere of the earth works in a very similar way. This is called the greenhouse effect. What is the greenhouse effect? The greenhouse effect is the natural warming of the earth attributable to the presence of atmospheric gases. This natural thermal insulation raises global temperature from 15 degrees Celsius to 18 degrees Celsius. The gases in the atmosphere that absorb radiation are known as the greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere trap heat. They let the sunlight pass through the atmosphere, but they prevent the heat that the sunlight brings from leaving the atmosphere. Now, when a concentration of greenhouse gases increase, the temperature of the earth gets higher. Hey, did you know that the earth is 4 billion years old and the greenhouse effect has been working for a long time to keep earth warm in order to sustain life? This greenhouse effect allows humans and all other life to survive on it. It's great, isn't it? Knowing what the greenhouse effect do to our earth, let me ask you a question. Is greenhouse effect good or bad? If your answer is good, then you are correct. It is good because it is necessary for life. It keeps our climate toasty warm and prevents it from fluctuating or changing too much. However, if your answer is bad, then you are still correct. But, it is bad when there are too many greenhouse gases and the climate gets warmer. Now, this will lead to a phenomenon called global warming. Human activities are now changing the structure of the atmosphere. It has increased the amount of greenhouse gases over the years. The greenhouse gases released by the human activities have twofold effects. 
one, they intensify the atmospheric temperature into a phenomenon called global warming, and second, they destroy the ozone layer. How does this warming compare to previous changes in Earth's climate? How can we be certain that human-released greenhouse gases are causing the warming? How much more will the Earth warm? And how will Earth respond? Answering these questions is perhaps the most significant scientific challenge of our time. Earth has experienced climate change in the past without help from humanity, but the current climatic warming is occurring much more rapidly than past warming events. Global warming is the current increase in the temperature of the Earth's surface, both land and water, as well as its atmosphere. The average temperatures around the world have risen by 0.75 degrees Celsius or 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit over the last 100 years. About two-thirds of this increase has occurred since 1975. Since we know that the greenhouse gases trap the heat from the sun in the atmosphere and too much presence of these gases causes global warming, it is important for us to identify what are these gases their impacts to us and their sources. The first among the greenhouse gases is the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide contributes to 50% of the Earth's global warming. Carbon dioxide can be formed by burning of fossil fuels, deforestations, and changes in land use. Next is methane. Methane traps heat 20 to 30 times more efficiently than carbon dioxide. It contributes to 16% of the warming phenomena. Methane is produced by landfills, wetlands, flooded rice paddies, natural gas, and biomass burning. Ozone contributes to 8% of the global warming phenomenon on Earth and it is formed when nitrous oxide reacts with unburned hydrocarbons. One of the greenhouse gases includes the nitrous oxide. It accounts for 6% of the global warming phenomenon on Earth, and it traps heat 230 times more efficiently than carbon dioxide. Nitrous oxide is produced when there are forest fires, burning of fossil fuels, and motor vehicle exhaust. The most common of the greenhouse gases are the chlorofluorocarbons or the CFCs. The CFCs are the most destructive greenhouse gas with the heat trapping property which is 20,000 times than that of carbon dioxide. Very harmful, isn't it? CFCs are produced by pressurized precans, styrofoam, solvents, refrigerator, and air conditioning unit. In 2018, it was reported by the United States Environmental Protection Agency that carbon dioxide contributes much to global warming with an 81% emission. It is followed by methane with 10% emission, nitrous oxide with 7% emission, and other fluorinated gases with 3% emission. In the past, when the Earth experienced increases in temperature, it will result of natural causes. But today, it is being caused by the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere produced by human activities. This chart shows the different human activities that contribute for global warming. As you notice, 49% comes from the energy use, 24% from industrial activities, deforestation with 14%, and lastly, 13% from agricultural activities. Global warming and climate change is happening today, 
and we must take action to alleviate its effect to the earth. Did you know that last year, the year 2019, it was recorded as the second warmest year by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States? The global average temperature increased to 2.07 degrees Fahrenheit or 1.15 degrees Celsius. This is way above the pre-industrial global temperature average from the year 1880 to 1900s. For most places, global warming will result in more frequent hot days and fewer cool days with the greatest warming occurring over land. Longer, more intense heat waves will become more common. Storms, floods, and droughts will generally be more severe as precipitation patterns change. Hurricanes and typhoons may increase in intensity due to warmer ocean surface temperatures. So, to sum up everything we have learned today, here are the keynotes that you should remember. First, greenhouse effect is the natural warming of the earth attributable to the presence of atmospheric gases. These atmospheric gases are called the greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorbs radiant energy from the sun. But, too much concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere results to global warming. Global warming is the current increase in temperature of the Earth's surface, both land and water, as well as its atmosphere. Human activities have played a crucial role in the increasing global temperature over the years. Thank you for watching! If you want to know more about the different atmospheric conditions, watch the next video!